up, everybody? This is Roger Dale Martin, and this is Grit and Gristle. Grit and Gristle is all about getting in shape. It's all about everything physical. We're going to be talking about a whole lot of stuff. It's about truth in bodybuilding, truth in being a fitness model, truth in just being a healthy individual. That's what we're going to look at. Uh, <clears throat> I've been a personal trainer for quite some time now. And uh, that's my day gig. I'm a musician, Vintage Rising, Once Dead, all those bands. And, uh, and so this is something a little bit different for me. And last week, I, I, I started some things that I'm going to completely uh, get rid of. Uh, right off the bat, one of the things uh, is um, there is no $10 fee. And what I was thinking about was you, you, I was going to do some work for you, figure out some macros, but I'm not going to do that. This is not going to cost anybody anything. In fact, uh, one of the goals here at Grit and Gristle is for you to, um, it's going to cost you less money to eat. Less money to eat correctly and less money. And so we're going to save money. We're going to get in shape. Um, and also, I like the family chat. Uh, the family chat, I don't have a family chat oh. anymore. Uh, I mean, I like that format. I, I like to be able to talk to you guys. Uh, and I like to find out what's going on. Um, right off the bat, the first five minutes, what I want you to do is tell me your name, where you're from, and we'll see who all's here. And then, then we'll go from there. Five minutes, who are you? Zap it in, let me know where you're from. Okay, and I have a little bit of... Pamela Barbeau says, hi, hi, Pamela. Darren Williams, yeah, I'm here. Here you go, Darren. Pow. Um... So we got Darren here and we got Pamela here. It's going to take a little bit of time. And while we're at it, see, I'm going to look at some things. I'm going to put that here. First things first, homies, we got to get some headbangers brew. Hang on. All right. Sending me $10 is not an essential. In fact, don't do that. But what is essential is this headbangers brew. Got to have it. It's a big part of our nutritional program, okay? Uh, is, is there a decaf? We have Larry and Mary here. Good to have you. In fact, I am so stoked because the whole production team is here, and we're uh, loving it. Headbangers Brew. All right. I've got some right here. And so what we want to do, I'm very partial to a, a French press. And so we've got some hot water in here. We've got Headbangers Brew in here. And what we're going to do is press the plunger on this bad boy. Oh, yeah. So when you work out, you can press the plunger real easy. In fact, here at Grit and Gristle, I want to make your life easier. I mean, say, how are you going to make my life easier? Easier to carry things. Easier to get up. Easier to get down. Easier to drive. Easier to do your job. And easier to rest. All right, then. Let's just pour it right in here. Woo-hoo! Almost missed the cup. You might see the steam off this bad boy. Mmm. Uh, Larry, can you see the steam off, man? Uh, yeah, I can smell oh, yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that's hot. All right, we've got to be careful. One thing is safety. We're always going to be safe. Uh, okay, let's take a look and see what we're here. Darren Williams is loving it. So we got Pamela Barbo and with Darren Williams. All right, homies, please tell me who you are. And where you're from? I want to see who's what's what's happening here. We're going to move into a um, a more relaxed, uh, more relaxed area. When I go into trainer mode, it's a completely different music mode. Uh, and so last week I kind of went into trainer mode um, with um, I'm, I'm getting hardcore. Well, I'm going to be hardcore, but with, uh, I want to include everybody. Last week I said send me ten dollars. I want you to get your body fat assessment. Um, and there's a, um, there's a formula that I use to figure out macros, and that's what I was going to do. It was going to cost me some time and some energy and some work. Guess what? I'm not going to do it. You guys are going to figure that out, and I'll show you exactly how to do that. Uh, let's see. Headbangers Brew. For you coffee connoisseurs, uh, for those who are not, we've got four steps with coffee. First thing we do is, is I, I didn't point that out, but as you're pouring it, you're going to look. You're going to see what the color is. You know, I like a certain color in my coffee, which means I, I use just the right amount of coffee grounds. Next test is the, uh, 
the aroma test, and that's good. Now be real careful. Test number three is the tip of tongue. You want to you want to kind of see how sweet this thing is. Mm. Oh, oh yeah, and then the full sip. Mm, mm, mm. Oh yeah, so good RDM. I used to be hooked up with Vengeance Rising. Let's go back to RDM. Grit and gristle, homies. <clears throat> Let's see who else we got here. Scott Heron is watching. Uh, Scott Heron, good to have you. We have Martin de Jong. I'm from Europe. So we got uh, Martin from Europe. Good to have you here. We're going to be worldwide. Uh, Scott Heron, good to have you. Scott is one of our podcasters. Uh, what's the name of his podcast? Uh, the uh, Powerhouse. Powerhouse. Yeah, okay. Scott's Powerhouse. So tune in for... Making my head bring, making coffee my in. coffee now. Yes, it is head bringers brew. So Darren Williams is with the program. <clears throat> Love that. Going to set this down. All right. Okay, we, we got about six or seven minutes after. And right off the bat, let, let's take a look at our foundation. What are we doing here? And our foundation is right in the Word of God. So let's pick that up. Bible talks about our physical bodies. And let's read some. First Corinthians chapter six and verse nineteen. Verse nineteen and twenty. Let me find this. Okay. Uh, Do you not know that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have? Received from God. And so we received the Holy Spirit from God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, three in one, lives inside of us. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You're not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. Here at Gris and Gristle, that's our whole point. We're going to honor God with our body. It doesn't matter what kind of shape you're in. We're going to start from ground zero for everybody. There's also one more scripture that we're going to look at, and it's Psalm 139. This is, this is a, a fantastic scripture, and I'm going to turn there right now. Psalms 139. Let's check it out. Verse 13 and 14. For David is talking, he says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together. In my mother's womb. And this is talking about God putting us together before we were even born. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And we're talking about everybody. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. In other words, <clears throat> the Bible's talking about our frame. I'm going to talk about the frame here. This frame, your skeleton, it wasn't hidden from me. He knows everything about you. Your eyes, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. So God puts us together. And he makes us in different ways. People have different gifts. People have different bodies. And basically, I've said this before, if you want to be a bodybuilder or a fitness model, choose your parents wisely. No joke. Okay? What one, the first thing we have to do in Grit and Griddle is accept who we are. Are you naturally thin? Accept that and like that. Are you muscular? Accept that and like that. And are you heavy? Guess what? Accept it. Be who you are. If you're heavy, your goal may be to drop some body fat. If you're light, your goal may be to put on some muscle. If you're naturally muscular, your goal may be to run a marathon, bench press 500 pounds, whatever that goal may be. All right. <clears throat> So, for each and every one of you, once, remember, don't send me any money. This is all completely free, and we're going to save money while we're doing this. All right? <clears throat> First, let's talk about accepting ourselves. There's something we need to look at, and we need to look at what the Bible calls the frame. It's our skeleton. And I'm going to get something up here and, and put up a board, and we're going to turn everything and look at this, okay? All 
rods. Something about like that. How does that work for you guys? Good? All right. <clears throat> And I have lost what I'm looking for. Hang on, homies. Okay, we're gonna get, we're gonna erase this, and we're gonna start from with a clean slate. So just hang on. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. We are a product of our mom and dad. In so many ways, physically for sure. Right. Just like that. We're we'll gonna take a look at some. We're gonna take a look at our skeletons. And I've got some pins around here. <clears throat> All right, we got three types of body tops. We got an ectomorph. Which is thin, naturally thin. We have a mesomorph. Muscular. And we have an endomorph. Naturally heavy. All right. Truth in bodybuilding. Here's the truth, homies. You can change uh, your body fat, and, and you can add some muscle, and even take away some muscle. But one thing you cannot do is change your skeleton. You're born with that, okay? Your mom and dad, basically, it's their skeleton that you're wearing. It's inside, okay? And also, let's, let's, look, at a, let's look at the skeleton of an ectomorph. Basically, you have your rib cage. Here's your rib cage. And you got your hip bones. Here's your hip bones. Here's your rib cage. Pretty much the same. And then you have clavicles. Clavicles of your collarbone. Clavicles determine how wide your shoulders are. So here's our clavicles here, and this is the skeleton. Legs, and you got your arms, and here's the head right here. You cannot change your skeleton. There are some people that are blessed with uh, long clavicles, wide clavicles right here. Boom. One of, the, one of those people is Jamie McCavanaugh. He's got some really wide shoulders. Not necessarily because of so much muscle on his shoulder, just his dang clavicles are so wide. He can be skinny as a rail, and he's going to look pretty good in clothes. Okay, because he's got wide clavicles. And his hip bones are probably not um, real wide. Now, there are some people. Now, for me, as an ectomorph, my clavicles are not, they're not that wide. Okay? And my hip bones are, are pretty thin. And so my goal is to put on some muscle here and kind of form more of a V shape. Okay? And let's look. There's a question. And a basic endomorphic frame. Now here some some people are built with wide hips. And their their clavicles are short. And you've heard people say, well, they got a pear shape. Well, their their skeleton is pear shaped. Okay, and so for someone who's an endomorph and has that type of skeleton, our goal is to not be pear shaped, but we want to be straight up and down. Okay, and as an ectomorph, we want to have a little bit of width here. Okay, but you're not going to change uh, if you don't have wide shoulders. You could put a little bit on, uh, but accept who you are. I'm an ectomorph, and I accept it. That's who I am. It's how God made me. All right. And so that's the first thing I'm going to do, accept who you are. Right there. There's a question. Okay. All right. And this, that's back over here, you guys. Okay, we're going to leave that easel alone for a second. Right there. Um, accepting who you are. That's very difficult. What I want to do right now is I didn't finish my story, my, my fitness story, because my fitness story is a journey just like a musical journey. Um, and it's really, in a way, been just as important, maybe not as important, or, or, or a bigger passion, but just really, really, really close. Okay. Um, last time I left off with my physical journey, I, I did, um, was working for Nissan. Um, and then I went from real thin 
uh, I, I did some, um, I did some, uh, I went to the doctor and got some things fixed up physically, and I gained a bunch of weight. Uh, and it wasn't, uh, in fact, I gained, I went from uh, 140 pounds to 190 pounds. I gained 50 pounds in five years. Wasn't all muscle at, at all. Um, quite a bit, quite a bit of body fat there, uh, and it was just too heavy for my frame. I snored, uh, I had high blood pressure, so, now, I have to accept who I, and that's another way, I said, as, as you go on this fitness journey, you will be, uh, you cannot change your genetics, uh, you can kind of, no, you, you are bound by your genetics, in other words, my goal was to get as big as possible, okay, there came a point where my body said, you're done, you're absolutely done, you're not gaining any more weight, no matter what, Okay, that was about 190, and that was way too, I was way too heavy. Uh, I snored uh, high blood pressure, the whole thing. And so, uh, and then I started uh, trying to drop some body fat. And, uh, and so, body fat is, is one thing that we're going to look at. And uh, so, let me go ahead and, and finish my story, and then we'll go from there. Nissan was a fantastic place. I learned about training, quite a bit about training, and I learned quite a bit about eating. And I succeeded um, uh, and, and, and putting on some size. I really did. It wasn't until later, but anyway, um, I worked for Nissan. It was a good gig. I, I had a big family at the time, and, and I needed a ton of cash. In fact, I don't care who you are. You need a ton of cash just to survive, all right? So, I was gonna, I was gonna retire at Nissan. I, I'm gonna work till I can't work anymore there and retire, and I'm gonna be good. Well, God had different things in mind. In fact, um, Nissan had a corporate downsizing. I think they had at the time, they had like 6,000 people working at the plant. And they needed to take this down to 3,000. This is when the housing market completely went poof, uh, and, and our economy went really, really bad. But they, they foresaw that and they needed to get rid of some people. And um, they said, well, we'll give you what we're going to do for everybody is, is having um, early retirement. If you choose early retirement, we'll give you a cash reward. Uh, and then, uh, then you could leave and start and do whatever you want, but, but, but you'll get some cash flow, okay? And I'll go ahead and say how much they went. They said, look, if you quit, we'll give you $50,000, $50,000. Now, for me, that was a few people did that, but for me, I was like, no way, not going to do that. Uh, 50000 seems like a whole lot of money, and it is at one time, but uh, you think in long term, it's not that much. Okay, so I, I said, we're going to hang out. And probably about a year, two, two years later, uh, no, a year later, they said, look, we, we need more people to do this early retirement. And I, and I said, we will give anyone that wants to quit $100,000. And uh, we will pay for a limited education for your next career, whatever. And then you will have COBRA insurance for a year. I said, nope, don't want it. Not going to happen. I want to retire here. Well, <laughs> that wasn't in the cards for me because the next thing I know, I was called into um, superintendent's office. And he said, Roger. I said, yes, sir. He said, you are in danger of getting fired. I'm like, what? He said, yeah. Um, your defects are horrible. You're, just, you're, just, you're, you're, you're about to get fired. And basically what he was telling me was, Roger, you got two choices. You can get fired or you can take a hundred thousand dollars and that was an easy one for me I said I'll take the hundred grand okay and okay so we got this cash flow and I'm out of a job now Uncle Sam took a whole bunch of that cash flow and I used some of that cash flow to pay off all whatever I needed to pay off and I had some left to start a business um, and at the time I'm going what am I going to do uh, it was two things I was going to do uh, I did a choice. One of them was uh, teach music, teach guitar. I was going to be a guitar teacher. And the other one was a personal trainer. Okay, those two things were my passion, and I had enough money to start a business and, and get going with that. And uh, I prayed about it, and um, I, went to, I went with a personal trainer because at the time the Internet was starting to get going, and you, there was so much about music that you could learn, uh, music theory, and, and, and I was like, uh, uh, the music teachers are online, okay? When it comes to personal trainer, there's a ton of personal trainers online. There's a lot of information, but you need one-on-one. -on -one. And so I chose a personal trainer out, 
and um, whoo, when <laughs> the first the first job I had, I went to a place called World Gym, and they bought out all the gold gyms, and I said, hey. I want to be a personal trainer. How much will you pay me? And they said, oh, you can make, I said, uh, $15 an hour to start off with. And I'm going, that sounds pretty good to me, 15 bucks an hour. And I said, but you have to have a certification. I said, well, okay, it's a personal trainer certification. I said, mm, okay, which is the best one? They said, the best one uh, in the whole nation right now is the National Academy of Sports Medicine. They have a personal trainer certification uh, program and I said okay that's the one I went for and then I studied and studied for three months and it was a big huge test it was it was a whole lot harder than what I thought um, so anyway passed the test and uh, became a personal trainer and in the beginning I didn't know who I was going to train I, I thought well I might be training bodybuilders or whatever but it turned out senior citizens were my niche I was training older folks. In fact, uh, I was doing, and how that happened was, uh, I was I was working in my gym. What I did is, I had learned that you can't make any money. Or those people who want to be a personal trainer, you're not going to make any money working for a gym. Just to let you know, here's the truth in the personal trainer. You have got to set up your own business. And when you work for a gym, basically, you got to hustle and get a client. Okay, I've got a client. They'll pay you a bunch of money. You hand it to the gym owner. The gym owner hands you chump change and says, now train them. Uh, didn't, uh, so, started my own business. What came in was mine. Okay, And what I did was I rented a spot out. I rented a room out at the Garrett Insurance Building right north of Nashville. And um, it was one-on-one -on -one training. You come in at a stereo system, had my own equipment. Right off the bat, bring your music. And so... Shut, lock the door. It was me and my client. It was very personal, personal trainer. Also, I am a personal trainer, which means I, I, way more than training, okay? Uh, there, there's a whole lot. They're paying me to get them in shape, and it's a whole lot of psychological stuff going on, and there, it's, when, it's, when it means personal trainer, I get to know you, and you get to know me. I've trained, I don't know how, I've trained young people, I've trained old people, I've trained big people, I've trained skinny people. Believe me, I've trained so many people. And what we're going to do, what I want to do is to give you guys the truth. Is what I've gleaned is what God's shown me the truth in getting in shape. Because you can read a billion things on the internet. One person will say, this is exactly how it's doing. And another person will tell you, no, 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 that's completely wrong. That's 180. you got to go this. And so that is, is what's very difficult. And that's, we're talking about nutrition. We're talking about training and so many different kinds of things. Okay? And so what I did, and I will do with you, I have a formula for success. And I, I, I figure this, there's four things you need to look at. A lot of people just look at one thing. Well, I'm going to start working out, and I'm going to get in shape. Uh, that, that's a small part of the equation, okay? In fact, I'm going to give you the formula for success right now, and if you guys switch over here to the easel, and Larry may have, it's a, he may have these written. Uh, first one, we have a formula. Let's look at this formula. Uh, first thing in this formula is training. Training is worth 25% of this equation. All right? Most people think, uh, and, and that's only 25%. As a personal trainer, what I do is look at each individual one. Training is the first one. When it comes to training, we don't strain. Uh, basically, we're focusing, try, trying to build a mind-muscle connection, focusing on contraction and extension, and we'll go into that uh, a whole lot more in the future. Number two, second thing in our formula for success is nutrition. It's worth 25%. In other words, what you eat is just as important as training. This is where most people completely screw up. Nutrition is about three things. Protein, carbohydrates, and fats. Protein is an essential nutrient. You gotta have protein or you'll die. Fat is an essential nutrient and you gotta have fat or you will die. Carbohydrates are not an essential nutrient. 
That's why ketogenic diets work. That is why Eskimos that lived in Alaska were solid ice for centuries. There's no carbs up there. They ate well blubber and they ate fish, basically protein and fat. Okay, <clears throat> and so, but we still, carbohydrates are the best form of energy. All carbs break down into sugar. And once again, sugar is not the enemy. Oh, last week we looked at the Song of Solomon and all the food that God fed his people with. There was, uh, see if I can remember them, there was uh, red meat, there was grains, there's fruit, there's dairy. Uh, there's wine, there's honey, there was a couple more things. So basically, all kinds of food you can eat. We're not going to exclude any food group, okay? Sugar's not the enemy. You guys, what we're going to find out is chemicals is the enemy. And the first thing we're going to do nutrition-wise, um, we're going to get rid of all chemicals. I challenge you to get rid of all chemicals. We're talking about you become an ingredient reader. On all your foods, you look at the ingredients, and you can find out. In fact, uh, one of the things uh, that people don't understand is peanut butter. Okay? You can have peanut butter. One of them is full of sugar. Like your basic Peter Pan, Jeff, you have to look at the ingredients. And if the first thing is sugar, <laughs> you're in trouble. The first thing is listed is what this is basically made up of. Okay? Peter Pan, Jeff, even if it'll say natural, even if they say natural peanut butters, a lot of times out of sugar, it will have palm oil in it. Smuckers makes a peanut butter that the ingredients are peanuts and salt. That's it. I'm good with that. Okay, no chemicals. No chemicals whatsoever. If you want to eat some carbohydrates, grains, look at oatmeal. What, what is the, another one is oatmeal also. Let's look at oatmeal. You click Quaker Oats. Ingredients, oats, you're good to go. Now, if you look at Quaker Instant Oats flavors, you say, oh, it's, oh my gosh, monosynagluteate and all this, all this stuff. Whole foods, no chemicals. That's the first thing we're going to do with grit and gristle if you choose to join us. We're not going to look at macros right now. We're going to see as much as we can get rid of these chemicals, okay? Red meat, fine, whatever, okay? But just keep... Chemicals, and it's harder than you think. Most of the stuff on the inside of a grocery store is full of chemicals, but everything on the outside is good. All right? So that's what we're looking for. Nutrition is worth 25%, just as important as training. Training is about not overtraining, and uh, nutrition is about not overeating and eating just enough. Number three in our formula for success is rest. Or you could call it stress management. Stress management, rest. Can you sleep at night? It's worth 25%. It Rest and stress management is just as important as what you eat or training. And people really don't realize this. In other words, if you're if a person is going through a divorce and I want to go in the gym and get shape, uh, good luck. Uh, there, there's there are certain times uh, of your life. It's just stress management. That's a stressful time in your life. And what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to. Here at Grit and Gristle, I'm going to give you tips on how to manage stress. Okay? And one of the things about training and what we're going to do, training reduces stress. Nutrition reduces stress. And plus, we're going to look at the Bible and for stress management. Uh, Jesus told us one day, time, look, don't worry. Don't worry about what happened yesterday because it's water under the bridge. You can't do anything about what happened yesterday. And don't worry about the future because you have no control over the future. We live in what's called daytime compartments, which means we have today and that's it. Okay, and that will keep you from stressing over your mistakes from the past and the future mistakes in the, in the future. Uh-uh, okay? It's all about living for today, daytime compartments. And a lot of times I'd have a, 
uh, a client come in, and I'm a personal trainer. I know I'm, something was wrong. I said, what's the matter with it? Okay? And they said, well, this and that. I said, give it to me right here. And they would just physically put, just like give it to me in my hands. I'd open the door, and I'd kick it out the door. Now, we're going to train for one hour, whatever you're worried about. Uh, uh put it away. And for one hour, we had no stress, no training. And there'll be more. There'll be more. We'll look at each one of these in detail here in the future. The last thing we want to look at, number four, is hormonal balance. Very important. It is worth twenty five percent. As a personal trainer, what I did with everybody is I tried to get everything lined up with 100%. Now, you could say training is 25%. In a way, it's 100%. Because if you don't train, you're not going to. It's not happening. Nutrition um, is 25%. Here we go. Rest your hormonal balance. Let's take a look at that. Now, this is where I, I, I had serious problem with hormonal balance because my testosterone level was way, 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 way low. There's a balance. Men and women both have testosterone and estrogen. Ladies have more estrogen compared to testosterone. Men have more testosterone compared to estrogen. And thank God that men have a little bit of estrogen or we just kill each other. You know, so, and thank God that women have a little testosterone or, or, or there wouldn't be any babies. We would just die. We, we, as, a, as a human race, it wouldn't carry on. Okay, hormonal balance. And, and a lot of times, um, look you guys, the easiest of these to take care of, believe it or not, is hormonal balance. This is the easiest to get 25%. What do you do? You go to the doctor, you get blood work done, the doctor looks at you and goes, you look pretty good, your hormones are balanced. Or he's going to say, oh, you're kind of out of balance, let me help you with that. This is the easiest. The next easiest to me is training. And uh, I'm going to show you some exercises in the future. I'm going to show, I want, to sh I want you to understand a mind-muscle connection. That is the main thing for training. We're going to focus on contraction and extension. That's going to be in the future. Training. And that's the second easiest to get up to 25%. Okay, then we have nutrition and rest. And for a long time, I thought, for, for a short period of time, I thought it was nutrition. This was what really screwed everybody up. They couldn't eat correctly. But <clears throat> I changed my mind rather quickly. It's rest. It's just stress management. That's the hardest in getting in shape is managing the stress. Because here's what happens. People will use nutrition to reduce stress. That's what happens. In other words, a half gallon of ice cream in 10 minutes, you'll catch, you'll catch a buzz. And if you, if you can eat a whole gallon of ice cream in 30 minutes, you're going to catch a major buzz. Okay. Uh, and that's stress management. The problem with that is, is you're overloading your system, and you'll come down, and then you got to eat more and more and more. It's, it's a terrible, terrible thing. So we're going to look at stress management. We're going to look at all these. And grit and gristle, we're going to know these up here, and we're going to figure this out. Okay? Oh, there's one other thing I want you to know. We're, let's 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 look at. Um, Let's look at body fat. I want everybody to understand body fat also and what we're trying to do here. I come upon this 95, I'd say maybe 90, 95% of people who came to me, they'll hear, what's your goal? I'll say, it's one of the things I ask people, what's your goal? I want to lose weight. I want to lose weight. Right. And really and truly, I understand that. I want to lose weight. Here at Grit and Gristle, we want to lose body fat. All right, so, so here you are, 300 pounds or whatever you weigh. This is your shape. If all you do is cardio or diets, 
you're going to lose 50% fat and 50% muscle. You are not going to change your body fat percent. Okay, and body fat percent uh, is, is, like say, if you're 20% body fat, that means you got 80% muscle and 20% fat. <clears throat> and, and that's been uh, a relaxed version of body fat. Okay, what? To get in shape, you need to reduce your body fat. If you're 25 now, 25%, your goal is to get 23% or to lower this body fat. <clears throat> it's way different because what happens uh, if you don't do things correctly you can lose weight in fact I can, I can drop water off anybody and most people in two weeks I can drop 10 pounds off people but it's not fat it's completely water and I can do that with the ketogenic diet and we'll talk about that on nutrition okay here you are and you say Roger I want to lose or, or you say I'm going to lose 20 pounds we want to drop our body fat percentage, not lose weight, because you can lose weight. So I'm going to do, I'm going to walk, and I'm going to lose weight. Here's what happens when you lose 20 pounds. You're just a miniature version of yourself. You're still at 30 or 40 percent body fat. What you have to do, what we want to do, is change this shape. The only way you change it is to drop that body fat and maybe put on some muscle. What we want to do. This is the shape we want. We don't want this. Or basically, this is a woman's shape, but for men, we want an X frame. That's dropping out body fat. Your health is not in weighing a certain amount. Your health is determined on how much body fat you got. And if you look at body fat, and you get your, that's one of the things I wanted you to look. Uh, in the beginning, I was in trainer more hardcore mode. Um, and if you, want, if you really want, want to do this, get your body fat tested. And then you'll see where you're at. And then your goal is to drop this body fat. Uh, I'll look at body fat to figure out uh, your diet. And, and we're all going to do that. So body fat is what we want to knock down. We want to throw down body fat. Okay? And we have to eat. In other words, the nutrition. You have to have enough protein. What we do when we... And, and there's another thing, too. you got to set up a baseline diet to really do things correctly. Um, but we're going to start from ground zero. And I don't care if you're 500 pounds, your goal may be, Roger, I want to get down to 475. That's a good goal. And you may have been in a car wreck and you can't work. And my goal is I'm going to walk 10 feet. Those are great goals. And you may be in really good shape and your goal is to, is to uh, perf compete in some kind of fitness contest, which is a fantastic goal. Okay? But... Dropping body fat is the gig, and that's what we're going to go for. Then there's health, and then there's a change of your shape. You have to have enough protein to feed your muscles. Without working out, without lifting weights, your body has no reason to keep muscle. But if you lift weights, weight-bearing exercises, your body, when it starts losing fat, as long as you've got enough protein, will preserve muscle as much as possible. Now, you're, anytime you, you're on a diet, a fat loss diet, you're going to lose a little bit of muscle. And anytime you're on a muscle gaining program, you're going to gain a little bit of fat. And so, there, there's a, to me, there's a very healthy balance in, basically uh, in bodybuilding. Uh, I always look for bodybuilders and the fitness models uh, as my, um, uh, my model for success. Okay? And here's a bodybuilder. A lot of people think, oh, those guys, they're out of... They're, they're balanced in a way because what they have, they want to have the most muscle as possible and the least fat as possible. And that's what we want to do to get in shape. We want to have the most muscle and the least fat. Now, those guys go to extreme. They're genetic freaks, um, men and women. They're, they're born with clavicles as wide as this thing and their waist this big, okay? That's how they're born. Uh, they're genetic freaks. A lot of times people will... Look at a magazine or something and say, this is the, uh, well, this is the workout program of Arnold Schwarzenegger back in the day. I'm going to do it. Well, good luck with that. He, he was a natural. Uh, that type of workout will wear you out. You can never recoup. When it comes to training, you guys, it's about recuperation. If you can't recuperate, recuperate with your workout, it, it doesn't work. Basically, when it comes to working out, you break down that muscle. 
A lot of times you, you'll, you'll have a pump in the gym, but what you basically want to do is you break down your muscles. You break them down. You rip them of the micro tears in your muscles, what, what working out does. All of a sudden, you're broken down. <clears throat> you're going to eat nutrition. You're going to eat good food. And what your body does is it has to repair that. Your body has to repair this muscle. And it takes about a week. That's why I only train one body part a week. If you're training your biceps three times a week, you, should, you shouldn't do that. Okay, those who've worked out before, boom, especially in the beginning, you'll do some curls. Let's say, with bicep curls, oh, you're sore the next day. Oh, the next day you're even more sore. And it takes three days before you're even sore. Guess what? You're not through because your body's got to repair this. Being sore... And, okay, I've kind of recouped because I'm not sore, but you have not rebuilt this muscle. It takes three or four more days to rebuild this muscle. That's what people don't understand either, okay? We're breaking it down in the gym. We're not building up. We're getting pumped when we're sleeping. You eat nutrition, you sleep, your body repairs this. So it's about working out, tearing it down, and repairing this muscle. And we have to eat right. we got to get that sleep. What we're asking our body to do is unreal. It's very, very difficult, but everybody can do it, and everybody's got certain goals. Okay, when I, uh, one of the things I did as a personal trainer, uh, even when I was in California, I went to a professional bodybuilding show. Flex Wheeler was the man. He won the whole show, and <clears throat> that was fantastic. And then when I moved to Nashville, I started going to these um, amateur shows, uh, which, which uh, basically... Um, only the big doll, only the big, only the big shows are professional shows. Amateur means nobody gets paid. You get uh, a trophy. But uh, I went to these things, and what it was, it was a commercial. The whole show was a commercial. Everybody's on stage. It, it's just like playing a gig, okay? Okay, you get on stage, and in the back behind the stage, there'll be like uh, ads, muscle tech, or Joe Blow's Get Big Boy Powder, all this kind of stuff. And then it's even more of a commercial for that. Here, here to, here's basically, I've competed before, and I say, this is Roger Martin. He, he's a personal trainer, Nashville, Tennessee. He works out of his own place here. Give it up for Roger Dale, okay? And then, uh, so it's a big, huge commercial. Also, um, it's, it's a feather in your cap as a personal trainer. If you've competed, um, uh, you learn so much, and it, it's like... Validation. Okay. I was in a physique contest. Okay. And I did that. Um, <clears throat> I learned about diet. I've done, when it comes to nutrition, you guys, I've done every diet known to man. Okay. I've done a weight gain diet. I've done a fat loss diet. I've done a ketogenic diet. I've done a 50-50 rotation diet. Any, basically any diet I've tried and, um, and see what works for myself. And, and bodybuilding, which we're all bodybuilders. If you say, I'm going to lose 20 pounds, guess what? You're a bodybuilder. All right? Now, you may not compete, and you may not look like a certain thing right there, but you got to go in bodybuilding mode, okay? If you want to, whatever you want to do here, you folks. Um, <clears throat> so the first time I competed uh, was at 50 years old, and I've always, I, I've always, at one time, when it comes to nutrition, again, there's so many million things I'll tell you. I used to really follow bodybuilding, and I would follow the gurus. In other words, there was these gurus uh, who were um, basically personal trainer, nutritional, uh, nutritional dudes. They would take a bodybuilder, and, and a lot of I, I looked at three different people. The one was Dave Palumbo. He was really into ketogenic diets, and uh, and I looked at his athletes. And then uh, there's another guy who was a high carb dude, Chris Aceto. Uh, no, he had like a medium carb, and there was another dude, his was high carb, so it was three different strategies for these bodybuilders to be as muscular as possible and as lean as possible, okay? And so I was all into that, and I would, I would see which athlete did what. So um, one athlete might not do that well on ketogenic, and another one just might just win the whole dang show. So what that told me is there is no cookie cutter diet, there is no cookie cutter exercise program. What, what we have to do, I have to know all these theories and then I would assess you and say, I think you may be fit into this mode or you will fit into this mode. It's just like training. Um, ectomorphs should train a little differently than mesomorphs and endomorphs. Um, ectomorphs, 
<sighs> Relax on the cardio. Believe me. Ectomorphs, you don't need cardios. Endomorphs, you need some cardio. Quite a bit. Cardio is basically, um, is all about your heart and lungs. Um, people want to have a calorie deficit. Okay, here's the thing about working out too. If you gain three pounds of muscle, if you gain three pounds of muscle, you burn calories. That muscle, that's equal to 30 minutes on the cardio machine. You gain three pounds, all of a sudden your body is burning just as much as if you get 30 minutes on the cardio machine. And it's a whole lot easier. Okay, okay, I'll burn 100, I'll burn 100 calories on this thing for 30 minutes. And believe me, all you got to do is take your peanut butter, which is 120 calories for one little tablespoon, just not eat it. And all of a sudden, would you rather not eat that tablespoon or would you rather spend 30 minutes on a treadmill? Which basically, it's all about heart and lungs. I trained a guy one time, uh, and he's like, Roger, I'm going to do cardio. He was real, he was overweight. And he started walking. I said, just keep your walking to a minimum, because what we want to do, we want with this nutrition, and we want this diet to work for us. Cardio is all about heart and lung health. That's it. Okay, so this dude, he started putting on these weights around his ankles. And I said, don't do that. He said, oh, yeah, yeah. And, and and I said, it makes it harder, you know, I'm burning more calories. No, don't do that. You're going to. Um, so what happened to the guy? He had some legs, but he overtrained himself. You don't, you don't wear weights when you're doing cardio. Cardio is about working your heart and lungs. And so next thing you know, he had a big gut, and his legs are about this big around. And, I said, and he said, I shouldn't have done that. I said, I know. Okay? And so we do, we're not going to overdo cardio. We're going to really look at nutrition. In fact, cardio was not one of the, not in our, I guess it would be a sub, a subculture or a subgenre of nutrition or training. No, but we're not going to focus so much on that. We're going to focus on the mind-muscle connection. Also, you guys right now, it's about 12 minutes till. Um, you have questions. Some questions yeah. Okay, I want you questions from cool. anybody who has a question. Darren, yeah. if you have a question, Charlie yeah. Wallace is watching. Thank you, Don Wade is watching. There are two um, in there. Matthew yeah. Matchray, where does medium build fit into that? Medium build. Okay, now Matthew Matchray, I would say you definitely have a medium build. Um, uh, that would uh, basically you got your end. You got your three somo tops, and, and um, Matthew Matchray, I'd say. Most people are not a pure ectomorph. They're, they're like a combination of ecto and mesomorph. Uh, or or there, there's combinations. To be a true ectomorph, uh, there's, it's, it's kind of rare. So you're like a combination. Matthew, I think you're, you're, I think you're slightly mesomorphic. Uh, and uh, uh, that's what I'll say. When I look at your physique, that, that's what I'm looking at. Okay. Um, uh, medium, uh, probably, I would say... Mesomorph with a, with a little bit of ectomorph in there. I don't see you being big boned and uh, and that kind of a thing. Um, so that's about that's about it right there. Any other questions? I wish you guys to yeah, take some questions one here. Down there about BMI. Um, just scroll up. Yeah, let's bit. see. I'm from Europe. Let's see. Gunnar is blessings from Iceland. Let's see if I can just throw me some questions. Roger West is watching. Carolina's watching. Is that Ken on camera? I don't know what that is. I'm an ectomorph, says Darren Williams. Yes, you are, Darren. And you're more of a pure ectomorph with, with a little bit of a uh, mesomorph. A little, you can get muscular, okay? Um, and you can get a fat stomach because I've seen that. You don't want that, okay? We're going to look at all this nutrition. Uh, Carolina's here. Hi, everyone. Just call Bear. I work at a school and drink a bang for breakfast. <laughs> uh, Pamela Barbeau, I had Starbucks today. No bueno. Christopher Keene's watching. Chris Dorman's watching. What's up? Larry Fish, we will answer everyone's questions in the last few minutes. Good. BMI, how do we do it now? BMI. Okay, let's talk about body mass index. Body mass index is the worst thing that that's ever been invented. Um... Uh, there are those, a body mass index says if you're, if you're a certain height, you need to weigh within this range. Uh, that's bogus, you guys. Uh, you may be six foot tall, and you've got an ectomorphic frame. Your frame is slender. 
guess what? You're probably, what's healthy for you might be a little bit too, um, you're not in the body mass index range. And there are those people who are just big boned. Okay, their skeleton was 200 pounds, okay? And said, so, oh, oh, you're too heavy. What do you mean I'm too heavy? I got a body fat. It's all about body fat. Do not look at body mass index, please. All right, we'll throw that one out the window. All right, it's a good question, Darren. Are there any other questions? Yeah, uh, Charlie Let's Wallace. Let's see what we got there. here. Um, okay, Charlie Wallace says, what type of blood work do you recommend beyond hormone levels? Complete blood, complete blood panel. And, I want, and if you're going to get blood work done, here's what I want you to do. Okay, and a lot of times they will not test for hormones. In fact, most of the time you don't. There's, there's, there's two things, that, there, there's a couple things, and if you want to write these down, if you're going to get blood work done, I recommend it. Okay, along with your regular uh, lipid levels and all that, I want you to get what's called testosterone check. Two different kinds. There's a free testosterone and a total. Get free and total. So there'll be two with testosterone. And write that down, testosterone, free and total, or put that in your notes. I'll give you just a few minutes. Extremely important. Also, remember testosterone, free and total. We need one more. It's called an extracted estradiol. And basically, that's an estrogen test. Where's your estrogen at? There's a balance. When it comes to a hormonal balance, women, estrogen up here, testosterone here. Men, testosterone here, estrogen here. In the right ratio. That's huge. It's 25%. And if you don't have that right, a, a lot of times, you guys, I'd have a middle-aged man come up to me, and he says, uh, Roger, uh, you know, I'm going to get a shape and do this, and, and I'll ask you one question. I'll say, dude, how's your sex life? And if they go, well, you know, I, yeah, I, you know, you know, I'm a, yeah, I, I'm new. You're lying. Okay. <laughs> what you need to do is, is get, go get you. Don't be afraid of the doctor. In fact, you guys, that really is the first thing I want I'd like for you to do, and I know a lot of people don't have money for this, and some people are scared of the doctor. Get over the fear of the doctor. They're there to help you, okay? Get your blood work done. Get your hormones level done. Because I guarantee you, you can, do, you can work your butt off and eat all you want, but if your hormones are jacked up, you ain't doing nothing, okay? Take my word for it, okay? So your overall health is extreme. In fact, we got to get an overall health to get in shape, okay? It's not just about, oh, I lifted weights and I'm eating Snickers bar. <clears throat> Don't work like that. We got to look at all four things: training, nutrition, rest, hormonal balance. Those are the four you've got to look at. Don't zero in on one. Sometimes you got to zero in on one. Right off the bat, a doctor. Okay, and a doctor will tell you. Uh, okay, you got your lipid levels, and it's going. Oh my gosh, there's a problem here. Don't you dare work out. You'll kill yourself. Or he's going to go look. Everything looks good here. You get in that gym, you bust your butt. I mean, six months, I want to see you and see how things are going. Your doctor is your friend, okay? And so go to your doctor, and the next thing, or your homework is start reading labels, nutritional labels, okay? We're going to get rid of chemicals. And I guarantee you, you get rid of your chemicals right now, you'll lose weight. <laughs> yeah, that's the first thing. The easiest thing to do, get rid of your chemicals, Okay. Larry, do we have any other questions? Yeah, one more right at the bottom. From okay, Chris. and Charlie Wallace, thank you for that question. Jess Colbert, I like to jog, but what type of cardio is the best to get the heart rate up? Okay, there's two types of cardio. There is a high-intensity interval training, and then there's a low-intensity training. LA is low-intensity. Either one works. Now, um, a lot of people are going for the high interval intensity. Jogging. Uh, is that from, that may be from Jessica Bear? Is that from Jessica Bear? Mm -hmm. Okay. You guys, ladies, I don't jog. I mean, that, this is my personal opinion. Because you're jogging, the ovaries are bouncing, the breasts are bouncing. Boom, boom, boom. It's hard on you. It's hard on your ovaries. It's hard on ladies. Okay, now some, but some ladies, they're going to jog. That's their thing. All right, if you want to jog, go for it. I don't recommend it. I, I, I like the elliptical. That elliptical is smooth. You, you, can, you can use your arms. If it's all you use, jogging is about those legs, okay? I like to use as much muscle as possible doing cardio. High in, you can get high-intensity interval training, H-I-I-T, 
get your cardio done in less time, and I think it's a lot more effective. Now, some people can't handle that. A lot of ectomorphs, they don't want that. Uh, I, I would recommend high intensity. I would go for a low, um, low intensity cardio, which would be just maybe five or ten minutes, real easy. Okay, and so that's 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 about cardio. Uh, let's let's let the diet work for us. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, any other questions, Larry? We got, it? and that's yeah, about it. About two, three minutes. Left. Okay, uh, we got probably about five minutes left. Um, <clears throat> says, as I'm preparing for these, you guys, I got a million things in my brain, and and what I'd like for you guys to do is think about questions. Uh, and most everybody um, has some questions about fitness because there's there's truth as far as Roger Dale sees it, and I've trained and trained and trained people. And they're paying me big bucks. And that's another thing, too. I knew I was going to be working about bring your uh, body fat to me and I'll write this out. Believe me, I charge big bucks. And I'm not going to charge you anything. This is about saving money. To save money, we'll get into that in the future. Uh, also, next time, I like this family chat. Uh, first five minutes, how's everybody doing? Where are you from? Good to see you. And I do have something that I want, I have a homework assignment. First of all, think about going to the doctor and getting blood work done. Complete physical. We're talking about men, don't be afraid of it. You need to get it done. Okay, ladies, the same thing. A complete physical. <clears throat> Every time I have a client, I said, what do you want to do? What are your goals? Okay. Now, you go, you, you can put on there whatever goals you want. You can say lose weight. Don't write lose weight. Let's just I want to lose some body fat. Okay? And we got another question right here. Right. Isometric versus weights recommended. Isometric, don't do isometrics. It's all about you have to have weight-bearing exercises. Isometrics um, is like, okay, I'm going to work my chest like this, or I'm going to work my biceps like this. Not, <clears throat> uh, and then I just lost it. I just lost that. Uh -huh. I, I think that's a... Uh, Darren, I wouldn't do that. Okay, I wouldn't do an isometric exercise. That one time they were uh, there. There's it doesn't really it doesn't help you. We need a full range of motion. We need to feel that muscle contracting, and when we need to feel it extending, contraction and extension. We'll talk about that in the future. Any other questions here? Right the Pamela Barbeau, what is your preferred way of us contacting you? Okay, <clears throat> whoo. There's two ways you can contact me. Um, I would go to my website, rogerdelmartin.com. That's an easy one, rogerdelmartin.com. And there's a place where, where, where you, can, uh, you can give me a comment or whatever you want. That's what I'm going to be looking for. If for some reason you can't get through, uh, do the Facebook message thing, okay? And I want, I want all your... I want all your questions. And then if, if I can answer something... A lot of these questions... Um, to actually answer is going to take me some time. Uh, uh, I, I can do a short, quick one, but I, I want you guys to know that the more you know, uh, the quicker you're going to get in shape. All right, then. Thank you, Pamela. RogerDelMartin.com. Uh, okay, what have we got? Boom, boom, boom. I think that's all we have right now. And it's just about what we got about a minute left here. We got one minute left. <clears throat> so hang on just a second. Don't send me any money. Send Sanctuary International a bunch of money. Essential. An essential nutrient. Coffee. Uh, decaf is against our religion. Okay? <clears throat> Caffeine's where it's at, and I'm being funny. I know, I know some people can't handle caffeine, but still, I think we'll have a decaf in the future, right? Okay. What's the best thing about this, you guys, is all the proceeds go to the homeless ministry. Uh, it, it, that's all it goes to. We're trying to make a profit and give it away. All right. Also, when it comes to getting in shape, guess what? We're going to honor God with our bodies, <clears throat> and we are going to get in shape. Write your goals down. Here's your here's your, here's your um, here's your homework. Write your goals down. So my name is Darren. You write that date down. My name is Darren Will. My name is Matthew Matchray. Here's what I want to do. I want to get a certain body fat. I want to I want to. I wanna, I want to bench press 100 pounds. I want to be in a physique contest. Or I want to get a girlfriend. Uh, there's lots of things you want to do. Or I want to get that interview. 
You know what? And I'm telling you what, your life becomes easier. And I'm, I'm getting real close to Look, the better you look, this is America. And if you want to be in a band, you better get your rear end in shape. Last thing people want to see is somebody up there that's not in shape because you're an entertainer. Think of yourself as an actor. Believe me, you'll go a lot further in any kind of career you have if you're in shape because people judge you no matter what. Uh, you have about five seconds first impression. Okay. And uh, clothes make a difference. We might even talk about clothing and what makes you look good and what makes you not look good. You are who you are. God made you. He loves you. I love you. This is Roger Del Martin, Grit and Gristle. We'll see you next time. Wow! <laughs>